Hello everyone, Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the stories in the stars. And today's story is about Scorpius, the scorpion that you can see behind me. Now, it has a bit of a history with one of the other shapes in the sky, that is Orion the Hunter. And cultures from around the world see scorpions and many other things when they look up at this group of stars. So we'll talk a little bit about what other cultures see, as well as the Greek backstory for Scorpius the Scorpion. So let's load up our sky simulator and take a look. So here we are, standing in front of the Cernan Earth and Space Center at Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. We have our date set for July 9th, and our time is 10 o'clock at night, just a couple hours after the sun sets. What we're looking for is Scorpius the Scorpion. We're facing towards the west right now, but Scorpius is going to be very visible in the south, almost directly to the south. So if we turn ourselves there, we will see these three bright stars that make up sort of the head area, and then the body and the tail coming down and around. Let's highlight that for everyone. There we go. So here is Scorpius the Scorpion, and this bright red star called Antares is one of the brightest stars that makes it very visible in the sky. Um, it's so bright and reddish looking that it often gets confused for the planet Mars, which does pass through this area of the sky sometimes. And so Antares, the name of that star, literally means not Aries, or not Mars. Um, so that's a way to differentiate it. Um, since they're very close to each other, that one stays in the same spot, but Mars will move around in the sky. I'll bring up the artwork here so we can see Scorpius, the scorpion. There he is in the sky. And Scorpius comes from Greek mythology. Now, Scorpius was a giant, terrible scorpion who was sent by the goddess Hera to fight against and kill Orion the Hunter. And Scorpius did succeed in that, um, but then Orion was placed into the stars by the goddess of the moon, who he was in love with. And that is kind of the story. It was just a tremendous fight between the greatest hunter and this terrible beast. And they were both put into the sky, but they were put on opposite sides of the sky. Orion is very much a wintertime constellation. You'll see him in the wintertime night sky. It's very bright and visible. Whereas Scorpius here is a summertime group of stars. They're visible about six months apart from each other. And that's because they were such terrible foes and they hate each other so much that it was too dangerous to put them near each other in the sky. So they had to put them on opposite sides, so they would never cross paths in the sky. They wouldn't be visible at the same time because there would be a tremendous fight in the heavens if that were to occur. Now, we see this as Scorpius the Scorpion based off of Greek mythology, which is where we get most of our constellation stories from, at least the ones that we use regularly. But different cultures around the world see many different things. Now, Scorpius is seen as a scorpion by many cultures, and we'll take a look at some of those here in a second. But it also is seen by some other cool shapes. Um, so let's take a look at what some other cultures see in this same group of stars. The Aztec cultures also saw a scorpion up there in the sky. It is a very recognizable shape as that. They called it the scorpion face. Um, and this is kind of the artwork that they used to describe that. It's a very interesting style scorpion. Um, and it is very cool. And there are some other cool ones. So let's take a look at those. Another interesting shape that a different culture has seen is from the Boorong people of Australia. Uh, they're an indigenous tribe in Australia, and they actually saw it as two separate shapes. Um, the What we would know as the head of the scorpion, they saw as the red-rumped parrot. And then the tail of the scorpion, they saw as the Australian kestrel. So they saw it as a couple of different birds up there in the sky. Uh, recently, there have been a lot of people who see this as something that the Hawaiian Islanders and other Pacific Islander people have seen this as, and that all stems from the Disney movie Moana. If anyone has ever seen that, then you know that they call this group of stars the Maui's fish hook or the chief's fish hook. And we can see here from the Hawaiian Islanders set that they called it the chief's fish line or the chief's fish hook in the sky. And that became really popular because of the movie Moana. So that is a good thing to recognize it as. Um, it does jump out at you in the sky, and it's the exact same group of stars that we see as the scorpion. It's just it is called something different in different parts of the world. And just like how we see it as the scorpion, or it is also known as the chief's fish hook, the Maori people of New Zealand 
um, saw it as the prow of a boat or the front of a boat. And I'll bring up that shape here. There we go. I call it the Great Boat of Tamarareti. And it is the, yeah, it is the front of the boat in the sky. And so that's what they saw this shape as. And finally, one of the my favorite groups of stars are the Ojibwe tribes because they saw some fantastic images up there in the sky. And the Scorpius is no different. They saw this one as the Ojibwe hero teacher. And it was a someone who taught the Ojibwe how to be a great hunter and hero up there in the sky. And we can see as sort of a bow and arrow kind of looks a little bit like Orion, which is the opposite of what Scorpius would like, but that's what they saw this shape as. Well, thank you everyone for learning a little bit more about the story behind Scorpius, this group of stars in our sky, also known as the fish hook and many other things throughout the world. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe for more science content and most importantly, get out there and take a look at your nighttime skies.